Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a draft, and this time, I'm only able to take two players from each country. Now obviously I'm allowed to take one, but I can only take a maximum of two. The idea for this was left very long ago, like NHL 22, but here we are. We're gonna try it out now. So let's find out who we will be drafting for. It is gonna be the Colorado Avalanche. No thank you, I don't need someone breathing down my neck constantly. We will however be drafting, as I mentioned already. Salary cap remains on. Player morale, fog of war, no thank you. And turn off the jabroni setting, because that's just what we do on this channel. I'm gonna say that we get pick number eight. I feel like I pick 8 and 12 a lot. I don't know why, but it's just what my brain goes to for some reason. We get pick number 2. Well then. So naturally, McDusty went first. The question is, do I bring McCarr back home, or do I pick up Matthews? Oh, actually, you know what? This could be a prime time to pick up Leon. As a German player, that's pretty clutch. You know what? I am gonna do that. Leon, welcome to the team, my guy. We could also go for Forsberg to pick up a super Swede early on. He is 89 overall. I think he would be absolutely nasty alongside Dreisaitl. What about goalies? Should we consider that? Actually, our picks are gonna be basically back-to-back. -back, so I am gonna go with Philip Forsberg. I was gonna take Saros, but... I just, for some reason, it is stained in my brain that he doesn't simulate well. So I'm going to go with Sorokin, and that way, we now have a player from three different countries at this point. I really want to take Kopitar just because he's Slovenian. I'm pretty sure he is the only one in the league as well. So should I do it just to play him second line center? I think I am going to. 10 million's a little extreme, but I think it's worth it. And I am now going to draft a Czech. Philip Hronik, 4.4 and 86 overall. That is a solid start to our defensive core. Pavelski has abilities and I want some line chemistry. So I'm taking him, even though he's 38. Ask me if I care. Go ahead, I'm waiting. Just for the sake of uniqueness, like I did with Kobitar, I believe Zuccarello might be the only Norwegian player in the NHL. And because of that, also he has two abilities. Welcome to the Colorado Avalanche, my friend. We have yet to take two players from one country, actually. And we have not drafted a Canadian player yet, but I'm going to start right now with Cam Fowler. 85 overall defenseman. He can play on that first pairing. The first country that we are going to max out on is going to be Czech. Welcome to the team, David Krejci. Guy simulates unreal. So now I won't be able to take someone like Voracek, which I actually was sort of planning on doing before I even started recording this video. But... You know what? Sometimes it be like that. I'm gonna draft this Wyatt Johnston guy. He's a Canadian hockey player, 77 overall, medium top six. He could be a fourth line center for us. He only got 73 faceoffs, but you know, turn a blind eye to that real quick. So now with Cam Fowler and Johnston, we are done with Canadians. Our first fantastic fin of the draft will be Huso Velimaki, 81 overall. Not great for the second pair, but hopefully we'll make it work. The man that appears in basically every single draft will once again find his way onto our team. He'll be a second line right winger, probably. You know what? We're going to pair Velimaki with Mata. I think they're both 81 overall, so maybe they will have some sort of chemistry. I doubt it. Not because they're the same overall, but just being fellow Finns, you know? I'm debating between Grubauer and Grice. Either way, we're going to have a German backup goaltender. I think I got to go with Thomas here because only two overall lower and making <laughs> a lot less. So my decision, it's not that difficult. Gustav Lindstrom, right defenseman. And that way we only need one more D-man. Let's go ahead and... Get that contract signed. The Slovakian Tomas Tata at 82 overall will be joining our team. We've actually only drafted one American born player so far. So that means Ryan Suter is eligible. And as a left handed defenseman, that might split up the fins for that second pair, but I think it's got to be done. So now we need three forwards, and I don't think this is going to be easy. I mean, there's got to be players, it's just their overall probably won't be that great. There we go. The Latvian centerman, not Derek Grant. I don't know how that even happened. Um, Zemgis, 79 overall, not too bad. 2.2 million, we can definitely take on that contract. So welcome to the team. We don't need a centerman, but we probably have a center that could also play the wing. In fact, I am guaranteeing you we do. Antoine Roussel from France. 
He is 77 overall, which isn't too bad. It could have been worse. We only need one more player now, and I'm ready to put this team together. And to finish the draft, Thomas Yurko, the Slovakian legend will be the final selection for your Colorado Avalanche. We're kind of lacking in the right wing department, but who knows? Maybe we'll have some left wingers that also play right wing or centers that play. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. There is the draft summary. I think we're going to be pretty good. I don't know if we will win the Stanley Cup. I don't have high hopes for that. Actually, you know what? Uh, our defense isn't great, but we have a really good goalie. And our offense is quite solid. Maybe we stand a chance? I'm just gonna turn off injuries quick because I forgot to do that. Sim past the preseason real quick because who cares? And then we will go into edit lines and find out what this team looks like on paper. Yep, all these pop-ups. That should be the last one. Here we go, moment of truth. Your Colorado Avalanche, that first line is foul and when i do best lines they actually change it to this which no thank you i will put forsberg oh he actually does shoot right that could be a problem i see now i still feel like i prefer this you know who cares if they all shoot right i could play dry on the wing and put pavelski in the middle but he's got 81 face-offs versus leon's 85 Maybe we'll try it out. If it's not working, I could always come back and just do best line. So we'll run it for now. We've got Sniper, Playmaker, Sniper on the third line, which is a bold strategy, but we're going to try running it anyway. This fourth line might not get a whole lot of action, simply for the fact that our ice time allocation is roll three lines. Once again, I am struggling to speak English today. So you're probably wondering, hey, where's Wyatt? Good question, viewer. Well, let me tell you, he's on the island of misfit toys, but the CPU did me a solid by drafting Lars Eller, who is Danish. So technically, we're still within the criteria. I'm a little nervous for this one, but let's, uh, actually, I'm gonna delay it. Let's check out the goalies first. Sorokin, backed up by Thomas. Very good. So we're, we're set, back there. Moment of truth. Let's go to defense. Is it bad? Okay, that's better than I thought it would be. And they kept the fantastic fins together. So these two have zero for line chemistry, but at least it's not dash something. And they're the best overall. So that makes sense. I'm okay with that. Lindstrom playing with Sutter. I wonder if I could... Oh, so that works as well. But I think I want Sutter on the second. And how did I... Yeah, that went to a plus two. But no, I'm going to keep it the way it is. All right, prediction time. We are going to make the playoffs with a grand total of 45. 45 wins. I was about to say like 42 or something, but no, I have more faith in the lads than that. I'll say Leon gets the most points with a grand total of... This first line should go off, so I'm gonna say he gets 93. On that note, let the games begin, quite literally. Started off the year 0-2, but we are bouncing back strong. 2-0 L to the Rangers. Okay, so... The New York team seem to have our number at the moment. Columbus certainly doesn't. Not gonna lie, guys, really liking where this is headed right now. Once again, New York beats the wheels off of us. If we keep up this pace, I may have actually undershot how many wins we're gonna get. We could easily get close to 50. Back-to-back -back wins. Can we take a third in St. Louis? No, we cannot. Louis Deharnay has been canned by the Winnipeg Jets. Big dub against the Oilers. We're on a Canadian trip here. And it didn't go too well other than that game against Edmonton. A nasty 9-2 win over the Golden Knights. And we currently have 34 Ws heading in to the trade deadline. And we're fifth in the division. And the Flames have built a super team, apparently. They're at 96 points. No one else has even touched 80 yet. This game against the Stars is a big divisional one. Because we have very similar records. Like, look how close we are right there. They do have two games on us, though. Entering the deadline to find out who's available, although I will not be making any maneuvers. Larkin, on the block. Same with Hatcher Kane, Pulak, Jari. But, no, I'm keeping our team. We're doing well, and I don't want to break that up. Pulak has been shipped off to Buffalo in exchange for Kamel and a second round pick. That's it. That's all they wanted to announce. Let's finish the season, and let's hope we finish it strong. Big... That's a big L. To the Dallas Stars is what that is. Oh my word. Like, what is this? What is this, EA Sports? Why? 
are we so good? And then all of a sudden, after the trade deadline, the team just decides, uh, I actually don't feel like playing hockey anymore, so see you later. 42 wins. All right, well, at least we made the playoffs. A nice little streak at the end there, winning, I guess, five of our last six. Good stuff. With 44 wins and 94 points, we are third in the Central Division. I'm imagining Calgary, yeah, won the President's Trophy. Almost 60 dubs on the year for them. They had Kreider, Kuznetsov, and Kucherov. Jeez, okay. Arvidsson, Backstrom, Boone Jenner, Kuzmenko, Camp, Kessel on the third line. The nervous guy in net, as well as Kakinen. And they had Dobson, Jones. They have like a... A solid team. I don't know why they did as well as they did, though. 94 points actually got us 8th in the entire league. So that is a solid finish. The 12th placed Golden Knights didn't make it. Unfortunate, to say the least. And I'm imagining... Yeah, that's going to be the last one. So the 19th placed Detroit Red Wings managed to sneak in. Columbus finished last. They had Larkin, Kaprizov, and Eberle on their first line. Tomasino, Stasny, and Arthur Kaliev. Mason McTavish with Jake Evans. So they're... Good for the future. They have Cates as well, McMichael, Kadahart in net. Yeah, they're pretty good, but I don't know why they did so horribly. Leon did lead the team, 88 points. Kopistar had 76, and then Pavelski had 76 as well. A nice amount out of Philip Forsberg. Kind of expected more, can't lie. Sorokin didn't really sim that well. He went 35, 27, and 5. Four shutouts, which, I mean, he had one more than Thomas. And he played a boatload more games. Unacceptable, Sorokin. Cam Fowler led us defensively with 35 points, but I didn't really expect to get a lot of offense from our defense. I don't even think we have an offensive defenseman. We do not. You know what? I think I am going to do best lines going into the playoffs and just let the CPU do its thing because it knows best, apparently. And Capo, 49 wins on the year, a 924 save percentage, 225 GAA at 85 overall. Who is this guy? Carell had a 916, Merzlikens a 921. Charlie McAvoy, point a game, what a mad lad. 82 points, and he was predominantly the best defenseman. Hughes, kinda close with 73, but you know, that nine point difference, pretty large. John Carlson had 70, and then we drop off to 68 with Victor Hedman. Two players break 100. McDavid and Kucherov, they get 101 apiece. It looks like Kuch is gonna win the Rocket Richard though with 59 tucks on the season. And Drysaddle's right there. So we did have a player that performed quite well offensively. All right, do your thing. Head coach preferred lines. There you have it. They want to tash too. All right, fine, fine. Be that way. Defensively, nothing moves because I didn't move anything. So that's how it's been the entire year. Goaltenders, obviously, Ilya. We do still have roll three lines, so this fourth line that has zero chemistry, not gonna get a whole lot of action, but hopefully Zuccarello can boost up that line. Playmaker, sniper, two-way forward, so that is very ideal. And then we have sniper, two-way forward, two-way forward. I want to put Kopitar in the middle, but I understand why he is not. No, I don't. Screw that. There you go. He probably has better draws anyway, no? 89. Why would you not put him in the middle? Let's hop into the playoffs and find out if this team will find some success. We finished the year strong. Again, won five of our last six, so hopefully we carry that momentum into the lofts. But, we shall find out. St. Louis Blues, round one. I'm simming the first three games because, truthfully, I'm not confident this time that sweeps will not be involved. Yeah, there you go. Come on, Colorado. Just don't get swept. Win one game. That's all I ask. I feel like that's not a lot to ask for. They are out shooting us quite miserably. And there you go. Tom Wilson. Oh no. Oh no, Rodriguez. This has all the ingredients to be a sweep. You just gotta put them in the pan. Finally, we get a power play goal from Philip Forsberg. Sam Sonov shutting the door over there. But not to Thomas Yurko, he's not. 2-2 hockey game. We brought the shots back. So maybe we will not get swept. 10 minutes to go, another power play for Colorado and we capitalize not on the power play, but just after Philip Forsberg puts the team up by one. Now can we hold them off and live to see another day? Yes, we do. Reverse sweep? I'm just saying, could happen. It's not impossible. That's a good start. Leller scores on Samsonov and we are out shooting them this time. How the turntables. St. Louis Blues. Another power play for Colorado. St. Louis kills that off. Still 
Nope, it is not still because it is now 2 nothing. Leon Barry's one, and we have a nice insurance marker going into the third and final period. Cam Atkinson trying to get the Blues back into it here, but I'm hoping that it's too little too late. Zemgis. You legend. I feel like we're getting a lot of depth goal scoring, which is weird. That first line should be killing it. This to push a game seven. Come on, Avalanche. We can do it. I believe in you guys. Reverse sweep is on its way. Cam Fowler, fire me vertical. Oh yeah, we take that. 1-0 after one period of play. Shots were deadlocked after one as well. So in that category, it seems like it's been a pretty even series so far. Halfway through the game now. Not a lot of action going on in this second period. Until Mark Stone buries one on Sorokin and ties it up. But it doesn't matter. Because Leon comes right back and gives the Avs a one goal lead. Heading into the third period. Right after I called out the first line. Let's go. Power play. Power play. Oh, we can't capitalize. Seven minutes to go. Still up by one goal. All they need is one to push it to OT. But can we hold them off? We certainly can. A game seven is now guaranteed. Power play early on. And we score already. Forsberg, it's a long power play as well. I don't know what they did, but clearly they're trying to set the tone here. Because they are upset. They were up by three. And now they're going to get dusted. Fire the boys up Kopitar. Oh, a shorthanded goal from Philip Ronick. Obviously. Get wrecked, Blues. They're handing out power plays like Halloween candy right now. But of course, now we take two penalties. And they score twice. On each of them. So now it is a one goal game. Just like that. No way! With two seconds left! Two freaking seconds! Well, this is going to be quite the third. 15 minutes to go. Shots are even again. We're kind of pulling away, but I imagine that they're going to bring it right back. They do. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Thank you. We killed it off. Is it headed to OT? Yes, it is. Come on, Colorado. No, stop giving them power plays. Man, just killed off. Five on three. How do you not capitalize on a five on three? Yes, Yurko, shorthanded goal, baby! With an incredible reverse sweep, the Colorado Avalanche move on to round number two against the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's see how this one goes. Go ahead, win the first three. See how it turns out for you. Uh, I'll sim the next two. And we might just, no, we will not. So right now, they need to win to push a game seven. Let's see if they do it. Okay, they do. Oh dear. We've been here before, Colorado. Let's get it done again. Power play for Chicago. A pretty lengthy one as well, seems like. JT Miller gonna score on Sorokin and get Chicago up by one early on here in the first period. But that's okay. Tons of hockey left. Okay. Pierre Engvall is gonna score. Perfect. Let's do what St. Louis couldn't. All right? Let them go up by three and then we'll come back from that. Perfect. All right? This is setting the stage so that we can come back and win this hockey game. Now let's just go ahead and execute that plan. Sounds good to me. We need a massive third period here. That's a good way to start it. That's a great way to start it. Zuccarello and Lars Eller. Oh my word. It is a tie hockey game. Do what St. Louis couldn't. Come on. If we win this game, that... Oh my word. Look at these two go. We don't even need anyone else. Just put these two out on the ice. And it's done. It's done. We're going to win. Perfect. Literally... Perfect. The Western Conference Finals. We got the Dallas Stars, and that's a good way to start. I guess Calgary must have got dusted at some point. Alright, so right now, they are- oh no. Oh dear me. We have once again dug ourselves a hole. Can we dig our way out of it? It was about to be a scoreless first period until Patches had to score with like 28 seconds left. What is with us getting scored on with buzzer beaters? I don't even know who their goalie is, but... They're playing extremely solid right now. 24 saves and they have a shutout. That's right, a shutout in case in case you didn't hear me. It's a shutout. Power play. And we capitalize. Kopitar going to score on Cal Peterson. All right, another power play. Dallas kills that one off. Oh no. I don't like this. I do I don't know. I just have a bad feeling all of a sudden. No! Don't you dare. Overtime. Overtime. That was like literally, can we hold on? T game. 
The overtime didn't even start yet, and they scored. Oh, it was patch- of course it was patch ready. You know what, though? We made it to the Western Conference Finals. I'm calling that a success. I couldn't have asked for more. Detroit wins the Stanley Cup. I guess Calgary probably got first rounded, honestly. Leon definitely carried his weight. 21 points in 19 games. Forsberg point a game. Zuccarello 15. Yurko with 10. What an absolute legend. Can't be too upset with Sorokin. He had a 919, 268, and Thomas, hello. This guy simulated outrageously in both the season and the playoffs. Not a lot for us defensively, but again, that's sort of to be expected. Not a big deal, but a 12.5 shooting percentage from Villamaki. Vasilevsky, a 9.23, a 9.34 from Cal. So he was absolutely on fire at 84 overall. Sorokin's right there. 9.22 from Igor. And his team only won nine games still. Or no, sorry, they only won four. Defensively, Petrangelo, 23 points in 26 games. Nurse put up 14 and 20. 14 and 26 from Boakvist. Not a lot of points from defensemen here. For forwards, Jesper Bratt probably getting the cons. Well, it might be Vasilevsky, but I feel like it's pretty hard for a goalie to get it. I'm interested now. 30 points in 26 games. Great candidate. 26 in 26 from Bergeron. Max Domi, 21 and 26. So this was probably their first line. And they absolutely lit up the lamp. Dreisaitl did well. He's third. And then we have Tage Thompson, 19 points in 16 games. Guy is unreal. Patches had a great postseason. We know the team awards here. Let's have a look at the individual trophies. Cooch gets the Art Ross and the Hart Memorial as well. Point of game, Charlie gets the Norris. Cooch gets the Lady Bing. Turcotte with the Calder. Jesper Bratt gets the Con Smythe. There you have it. Uh, Kappa with the Vesna and the Jennings. Edmondson gets the Masterton. Bordello with the Jack Adams. Barkov takes home the Selkie. Cooch with the Lindsay as well and the Rocky Richard. What a year for that guy. Here is your playoff tree. Calgary got swept in the first round by the Dallas Stars. Wow! Dallas didn't even struggle until the Stanley Cup final, and Detroit got the better of them in seven, so clearly they had quite the squad. Well, anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for commenting ideas, and yeah, I hope you're enjoying the videos. You don't have to, but if you could subscribe, that'd be sick. You know that, like, graph thing that YouTubers show where it's like, oh, 90% of you aren't subbed. I don't know how to find that, but it's probably true. On that note, I'll see you soon.